let's take a small little concept in the excitation of the heart which is the last part in the heart to get depolarized excitation occurring last in which part of the heart let's write down the parts last to depolarize last to excite will be the base of the heart base of the heart because depolarization spreads from apex to base so this is the base of the left ventricle this is the base of the right ventricle uh, left ventricle will take little lo longer time to complete the excitation because left ventricle is a thicker muscle mass so base of the left ventricle and the third point is depolarization spreads from endocardium to epicardium it goes from endo to epicardium so last to depolarize last to excite would be epicardium of the base of the left ventricle this is how it spreads in the ventricle and that's the last part to depolarize and excite apart from this there are two more parts which you we should be aware of pulmonary conus and now this will be interesting uppermost part of the interventricular septum uppermost part of the interventricular septum this is also among the last to excite last to depolarize now this is surprising let's see how and let's see why what's the logic so here is a complete diagram of the heart let's see the conducting system in the heart so we have sa node av node and there are internodal pathways that will take the impulse from sa node to the av node and then there is bundle of his now listen to this part carefully bundle of his gives off the left branch and then bundle itself continues downward as the right branch bundle gave off the left branch and then bundle of his continued downward in the right ventricle as the right branch of the bundle of his so when depolarization crosses the av node and enters the bundle of his it first enters the left branch then through interventricular septum it goes to the right and then it goes in both branches towards the apex this is how impulse spreads from uh, the left to the right now note one more point because of this spread of impulse from left to right it's going to cause a q wave on the ecg remember q wave is the first downward deflection on the ecg why it is downward because all the other waves of excitation in the ventricle in the heart they are spreading leftward and downward remember these are vectors they have magnitude and they have direction so our excitation waves waves of depolarization are spreading leftward and downward whereas this one particular wave is going in the opposite from left to the right through the interventricular septum so it's going in the opposite and therefore uh, it gives a downward deflection called as q wave on the ecg so first downward deflection is because of this wave spreading from left to right now because of this kind of spread the uppermost part of the interventricular septum it has not uh, been depolarized at this point of time depolarization spreads in the uh, ventricle toward the apex and then as it is moving towards base this uppermost part of the interventricular septum will be depolarized in the end by the smaller branches of the conducting system 
so mind you when the base of the heart is depolarizing that is the time when uppermost part of the interventricular septum is uh, uh, depolarizing or exciting now what is the logic behind it the logic is also very simple to understand consider that uh, depolarization leads to contraction that we have already uh, we have this conceptual background that it's the depolarization which travels through the nerve it's the depolarization which enters the muscle and it's the depolarization which leads to contraction of the muscle so the way depolarization will spread in the heart the contraction will happen in that particular fashion so imagine this that this part uppermost part of the interventricular septum was the first to depolarize let's imagine this because it's it's at the very starting point of the ventricle so it got depolarized in the beginning let's under, let's uh, imagine assume this by the time this depolarization spreads in the ventricle what's likely have to happen is that it will repolarize by the time depolarization spreads in the heart completely this part the uppermost part of interventricular septum will repolarize and it will actually because it was first to depolarize it will contract and then it will relax so by the time depolarization spreads in the heart and both ventricles begin to contract we need interventricular septum to be upright and tight but what will happen the interventricular septum might just relax because it already depolarized it already contracted and the time has come for its relaxation when the ventricles begin to contract so that will be avoided how beautifully in this manner that depolarization will spread in the ventricle but this part was left out and this will be depolarized in the end when base of the heart is also depolarizing and then when the contraction begins contraction of the ventricle begins uh, this part the uppermost part of the interventricular septum uh, will be contracted because it just now it depolarized so it will remain contracted and therefore interventricular septum will remain tight and upright when the ventricles are contracting so this is the last part to depolarize along with the base of the left uh, base of the heart base of the left ventricle and epicardium